we have a guest speaker for you this morning. <coughs> I'm going to introduce to you Elizabeth Manning. Elizabeth, Elizabeth, like me and like quite a few of you, is uh, dyslexic. And she's going to talk a little bit about her journey and how the struggling a little bit at school academically is not necessarily something that is going to hold you back later on in life. So, welcome, Elizabeth. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. How are we feeling this morning? Good. Good, good, good. Wonderful. Um, my name is Elizabeth Quartinger Manning, as, um, as Steve uh, has already introduced me. Um, I run an organisation in Wandsworth um, known as A to Y Dyslexia. Um, actually, what it stands for is Aspire to Inspire Dyslexia. Um, and this organisation was. Um, formed or uh, was born through an experience of um, obviously being dyslexic. Um, I'm dyslexic and um, dyspraxic, I've got Erlen syndrome, um, dysgraphia, all the dys, I have them. Um, and then someone says to me, spell me dysgraphia, and I'm like, is it a D or is it an F first? So it can be a bit of a challenge in all these big words that mm. they use for specific learning difficulties, and yet as a dyslexic person, it's a real issue sometimes to spell those words. But um, my journey started when um, I finished my postgraduate um, teaching certificate. And I was actually looking for work, and I went to JCP, and um, Job Centre Plus, that is. And my work coach said to me, um, well, you're here to look for work. Get on that computer and start looking for work. And I actually froze for that minute. I panicked for a bit because I, I said to her, um, is there any one-to-one -one support here? And she looked at me and said, what do you mean one-to-one -one support? And I said, I'm actually dyslexic and I'm going to need one-to-one -one support. And she said, well, we don't actually provide anything like that. So I stood there for a minute and I just thought, if there's no help for a dyslexic person in JCP and Job Centre Plus are doing a fantastic job, really fantastic job, but I needed that one-to-one -one support so that I will be able to look for that work and move forward. And there was no such thing. So I said, right, that's it. Let's set up a website and let's start helping the community in terms of specific learning difficulty, dyslexia, dyspraxia, dyscalculia, whatever that, that, that may be. So today I'm here to talk to you about my journey. And I think Hector might need your help to actually um, do this for me. So Aspire to Inspire Dyslexia, like I already introduced myself, we're in a community, we're in a Wandsworth community, and we help ages from seven or five or whatever the age is, up to the age of 100. We don't discriminate in terms of age. We will help anyone and everyone who needs help and support in terms of education, <coughs> employability, or entrepreneurship, like set up your own company or set up your own business. And like I, as I explained earlier, it came from being at a point where I really needed support and I just find that there was not one-to-one -one support for me. So in our team, this is the team here, we have Kathy Evans, who is our um, dyslexia assessor. And then we've got Jesse Hacken, who deals with the children's services. And Jesse gives one-to-one -one support and any other um, help or support that parents need for children with dyslex um, dyslexia. Um, and then we've got Sharon McLean who supports in the business area and she will support the individual when you all leave here and go to university and finish, come and see um, Sharon and Sharon will support you from your business plan from the start to the end of setting up your business and she doesn't just leave you there, she will support you for one more year whilst you're setting up your organisation as a dyslexic person, she will give you that support. We've got John Hicks who's a life coach. And of course, um, for my journey, being dyslexic, I find that at some point I used to not want to talk about it when I was younger. But now I actually stand on top of a mountain and I will say to the whole world, hello, I'm dyslexic. Hello, can somebody help me spell Elizabeth? Because I'm struggling with it. And um, John gives life coach. And what I find is that a lot of clients that come through our door, uh, initially they're a little bit sort of don't want to talk about dyslexia and so forth. And they've had emotional baggage that comes with it. And John will actually guide you from step to step to actually utilize your skills and bring all those positivity that, you know, what one's got um, as a dyslexic person. Um, and John also runs um, a blog called Studying with Dyslexia and he posts a lot of stuff <coughs> about dyslexic people. We've got Senya, who is my one-to-one -one support. 
and Senya couldn't be here today because she's travelled, and she will help me with all the academic and written stuff that I struggle with. And then she would say to me, Liz, why don't you go and do what you can and I do what you can't? And it works so perfect. And she's an amazing person. <coughs> she runs her own business consultancy and that support comes from um, Access to Work, which is Job Centre Plus. And then we have um, Linda Warwick, who's our bookkeeper and accountant. David Mallet, and David is a business entrepreneur. He's won so many awards for um, running his own organisation. He's actually based in Putney, so that's um, um, David. And then Sandra, who's just right here. Um, Sandra works with us A to Y. She also has her own organisation called Keep Safe Videos. Hope I said that right, and not Keep Safe. <laughs> and um, Sandra actually works within the community doing filming. But one thing I find as a dyslexic person, I like to have things, actually, I like to watch something, because I'm a visual person rather than reading. So Sandra does a lot of filming, and then of course, that's how we get it out to other dyslexic people who struggle to read um, in that area. So that's the team. Aspire to Inspire Dyslexia, this is the services we provide. Um, dyslexia um, Awareness, Dyslexia Assessment, you see I'm struggling to read that, and I? But I'll get there. <laughs> Information and Help for Dyslexics, and, um, Enterprise Startup, Employability Skills, One-to-One -one Support, which I've said um, earlier. Um, adult Returning to Education, so when you, you know, you, when you're older, I find a lot of dyslexic people, they didn't really maybe done so well in, in school and then when they left and then now they're a bit older like my age they've actually decided to do something about dyslexia so they probably would never have known that they're dyslexic back in our days because there wasn't much awareness in the 80s or 70s about dyslexia itself and of course we do inspirational speaking and we have the, the ex-mayor of Wandsworth I don't know if anybody met her last year we've done a lot of events where herself a lot of the councillors in the borough who are dyslexic and who will actually go out and, and talk and our talks are normally September sort of um, and that's our annual event so near at the time I'll let Steve know if anybody's free you can bring your parents along to these talks and of course we've got children's services and that's from the age of about seven up to they get to um, secondary school and, and beyond so my journey so my journey started um, as I explained earlier from JCP but I'm going to go back a little bit to when I was at primary school I went to a school called Walsingham, it's probably been it's shut down now, it's, it's gone. And um, I remember my first day at school and I had to get up and read in front of the class. And I got this paper and I looked at it and because I've got Erlen syndrome, worst move off page, it's like if water spilt on the page. So I couldn't actually read this um, particular um, um, notes that they gave me to read. Um, so I stood there and, and I just froze and I thought, do you know something? Why don't you just tell people about yourself instead? So I stood there and I spoke about me at the age of about, I think, I don't know, you go to primary school at the age of five, six, when you start. And that's when the teacher kind of um, took a like to me. But what she didn't realise was that reading and writing was going to be a little bit of a struggle. So she actually saw me through primary and then um, at a certain stage, um, what it was <laughs> is that because I couldn't focus properly and couldn't do it right, um, I became a little bit distracted in class. And that wasn't very good. So don't be distracted, girls and boys. <laughs> and um, it was a little bit of a struggle. And then nobody really picked up on dyslexia. So I kind of did what I could at school. I left school with no qualifications at all because I just couldn't do it at those times. And there was no support in terms of assisted technology or one-to-one -one support or any knowledge about dyslexia. And I worked in different organizations. When it came to all the creative stuff I was brilliant at doing, when it came to academic, it was a little bit of a struggle. So I always found work that involved talking, like what I'm doing now. So it makes it easier. If that's my skill, I'll utilize that. So that was a bit of my journey. And then I went to college and I completed one year, didn't quite finish it. And from there, I said, right, okay, what can I do to earn more money? And I, a friend of mine who went to uni spoke to me and she said, well, why don't you go to uni? I said, yeah, great. It's a brilliant idea. Well, I'm going to go to university. But what am I going to go and study? I said to myself. So I got to admissions and I said to the lady at admissions, I'm here to study, but I don't know what I'm going to study. So she said, well, why don't you do human resource management? It's a great course. And I went, okay, it involves human. I could do that easily. So um, I went on a course and what I didn't realise was lots and lots of reading and lots of um, assignments and things. But... My first year at university is when my dyslexia was picked up. 
because I wrote an essay for my um, lecturer and she read it and she said, um, can I have a word with you about this? What have you written here? I said, well, you, you're the lecturer, you're the lecturer, you tell me. All my D's and B's were all mixed up and it wasn't quite good. So she said, well, have you ever been for an assessment? And I went, what's that then? She went, go for an assessment. And I did, to get a long story short. And that's when dyslexia was picked up, Erlen syndrome and dyspraxia, which I'm still struggling to understand what dyspraxia is, by the way. <laughs> so um, from that time, I went away and I said, oh, what's all this? And then I had to go and do a lot of research about it. But it didn't stop me. I said, no, ma no matter what these big words are, I'm still going to go out there. So I did university and I came out with a tutu. Um, for me, that was a, a great achievement. And from there, I decided to go and do something I really, really love, which is makeup, creative. I don't want to do makeup and I want to do hair. So I enrolled at Kingston College and I went and I did um, film and TV makeup artistry. And I loved the course so much. And then I, as I did that course, I finished and I decided to go and teach. I said, I'm going to be really bold and brave and I'm going to go and teach. I want to be a teacher. So then I went and did my postgraduate certificate. But I knew that there was something that I wanted to do to help other dyslexic people. And that the word dyslexia then dropped in my mind and I said, I want to make a change. And because I want to make a change, what can I do? And that's why I was born. So a little bit about my journey and there. So dyslexia, I think me as a person with dyslexic, dyslexia, whichever way around you look at it, I wear the label with pride. Because what it is, is all that. I am exactly all that. And everybody here, or anyone here that is dyslexic, is all that. Very determined. We will not stop till we reach our goal. I don't know, I can't pronounce that word. Maybe someone can pronounce the middle one for me. <laughs> that one in the middle with the U, yeah, that one, we are that. We're versatile, we're intelligent, pioneering, exceptional, brilliant and creative. And if there's anyone here that's dyslexic, would 100% agree with me on all that. And then, of course, there are some amazing people in a world, across the world, in a country, in Wandsworth, there are dyslexic. And some of them are Nicola Nardelli, who is our ex-mayor from Wandsworth. We've got um, Michael Hilton, and Michael owns heliports. I don't know if anybody knows about the heliports in Battersea. And he owns that heliport. And his journey as a dyslexic person, honestly, it's just gruesome. But he's made it. He's made it there. And of course, Melanie and their, their husband and wife. And Melanie's dyslexic, Michael is dyslexic. And of course, we've got Steve, <laughs> our own Steve, who is dyslexic himself. And, uh, and I'm so, so proud. Everywhere I go, I talk about Steve because I think it's such a great achievement. And if you look at these images and you say to yourself, I'm dyslexic and because of, that's a lie. Because there's nothing that is impossible. You can achieve anything you want to achieve in this world. David Mallet, I spoke earlier. Charlotte, who um, was, is a former president of Rotary Club. Um, she's dyslexic as well. And then, of course, we've got some <coughs> famous people with dyslexia. Um, can anybody see? Who can tell me who's who on there? Come on, who can tell me? Who wants to go first? Lord Sugar. Will Smith. Winston Churchill. Professor Pearl. Professor? Um, Professor Pearl? Uh, yeah. um, <laughs> okay. Right. So, to, to actually, to cut a long story short, you can see all these people, they're all dyslexic, but are entrepreneurs or have really made history. So, as you see, it's not a hindrance, it's not a barrier. We learn differently. So, as you can see, I think I can recognise a few people. Theo, I can't pronounce his surname. He was on that, he is still on that drag as then. Yeah. Uh, you've got um, Alan Sugar, we all know Alan Sugar, you're fired. Yeah. And then we've got, uh, I think he's a musician. That's right, yeah. And then, Liam, Liam. Liam, yeah, that's it. And then we've got Winston Churchill, is that? I, I don't know who he is. Tom Cruise. Tom Cruise, yeah. And then uh, Wanamaker, Zoe Wanamaker. Uh, I don't know who he is. That's right, then you can say it for me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Robbie Williams. Robbie Williams, yeah. Will, Will Smith. Smith, yeah. Summer. Yeah. Whoopi Goldberg. That's right, Whoopi Goldberg. Okay. And Bill Gates, yeah. Okay. And, um, and of course, on this slide here. <laughs> on this slide here, there's a few, there's a few famous faces on there. 
And as you can see, you've got Steve Jobs, Cher, Richard Branson, and the list is forever and ever and ever. So the only thing I want to say is, um, the only thing I want to say is dyslexia, the word dyslexia, if you are dyslexic and you're in here, never ever be ashamed of dyslexia because it's something that it's, we, we learn differently. And like I said, I wear the label with pride and I go out in the community and I say to people, I could, I could stand on top of a mountain and say, hello everybody, I'm dyslexic, but this is how I do it. And this is our services and all our different social media. Thank you for your time. Okay, so I don't think we've got time for questions as such. I'm just going to ask Alex Repetto to come up and say a few words. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you. And uh, it's very inspiring and uh, it's a privilege for us for you to be here and also because I'm dyslexic and uh, you know it's very interesting what you've talked about and hopefully it will help any people here and even if they're not dyslexic also inspire them to do better. Thank Absolutely, you. thank you. Thank you. <laughs> The way I think we, we look at that in this school is, uh, I hate this, this, this label S-E-N, and they now have a D on the end as well, so it's special educational needs and disabilities. And the reality is, the way I look at you, the way we look at you in this school, is that every single one of you is created, unique, and special, and gifted. And if you happen to be dyslexic as well, that's just, that's just all part of it. Many of you aren't. And you're just as equally special, unique, and gifted. And what we like to do is we like to try and find what it is you're good at and really bring that out of you. And, um, you know, we can all get by with a bit of determination. I love that definition that uh, Elizabeth put up there of uh, dyslexia and, and the way it meant to her, because I really do resonate with that. And I would encourage every single one of you to pick up on those letters of determined, unyielding, versatile, creative, because we can all be that. So I hope today that that has been a really, really inspiring talk. Thank you.